Now we need to find the change in position under constant acceleration. We did velocity, now let's do the more difficult case of position. It's going to take some calculus, so just bear with me. If you hate calculus, you could skip this lecture. I'd suggest you watch it. The next video, I'll do it completely graphical, and maybe you'll like that better if you hate calculus. If you love calculus, this is it. Here we go. Get excited. Here we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to derive it for an object that's accelerating, constant acceleration. We're going to look between time 0 and time t, and in that time, it goes from initial velocity to final velocity. We've kind of already done that but also it goes from an initial position to a final position. Right? So at time t equals zero, it's at vi and xi. At time t equals t, it's at vf and xf. That's the plan. So let's start like this. It actually all starts with the instantaneous velocity being the derivative of the instantaneous, I'm sorry, the instantaneous acceleration being the derivative of the instantaneous, instantaneous velocity. And then we just rearrange this. We bring the dt over here, and we say dv, the little differential change in velocity, is just the acceleration times whatever differential change in time you do. That's just the differential version of v equals at. And what we're going to do is integrate over the interval we're thinking about. Integrate from 0 to t. Integrate just means sum up. We're going to add up all these little delta t's, dt's, and apply them time, multiply them by a to see what the new v is. So you'd write that in the math formalism. It'll look like this. You'd integrate dv from um, vi to vf, right? And uh, that would be equal to the integral of a dt from 0 to t. Right? Your limits have to match whatever your differential is. Here the differential is v, so they're v's. Here the differential is dt, so they are t's. So if we integrate dv, if you know how to do calculus, the integral of dv is just v. All right, so v evaluated from vi to vf. What vectors everywhere. That's equal to a dt, the integral of a constant times dt is just the constant times t. So that's a t integrated from 0 to t. All right. And then what do we got to do? We just got to uh, apply uh, the bounds, and you'd get vf minus vi. So plug in vf for v, that's vf, minus plug in vi for v, vi, equals at, plug in t, you get at, minus plug in 0, you get nothing. So this part is just at. Right? And then you see, that's basically what we just did. Right? That's the final velocity is the initial velocity plus at. That's the calculus version of that other board that we did. So if we want to get to position, now we go to v. The instantaneous velocity is the derivative, the time derivative of the position, dx dt. Same thing. Turn it around and say dx equals v dt. All right. That's just d equals vt, really, the old the equation you know and love. And what we're going to do is integrate it. And in this case, I could have left myself a little more room. We're going to integrate dx from where? xi to xf. And vdt, we're going to integrate from what? From vi to vf. I'm sorry, we're doing d, from 0 to t, integral over t. All right. OK, now let's see. The left side is easy to integrate. The integral of dx is just x, and we evaluate it at xf minus xi. Right, so this just becomes the final position minus the initial position. Right, and now what about this integral? We just have a v there. Is it just vt? No. Right, we just stick a t on there when there's a constant. Right, this was a con 1, 1 times v, or 1 times x. Here, a was a constant, so it just became at. But v is not a constant. v is changing in time. And we know how it's changing in time, over here. Right, so this is v at some time t. That's actually what this was. This is the v final, is v initial uh, plus at, where v final really could be at any time. v final was the velocity at time t. So we can actually plug that little expression into here. It's the integral from 0 to t. And for that, 
velocity expression, that's really a function, we write v initial plus a t dt. Right? That's where it gets interesting, if that's, what, if that's interesting to you. I hope that it is. So now we take the integral of that. Right? So we have the final position minus the initial position, also known as the displacement, equals, let's see, so that's integrate this part. Now that is a constant. Right? This velocity, this is the initial velocity. It's not a function of time. It's a constant. So the integral of that is just vi times t. And then plus a t. The integral of a t is bring the t up to squared, divide by the 2, is 1 half a t squared. And yeah, technically, we've got to evaluate that from 0 to t. It kind of already was. But uh, just to give myself another step, I'll put the final position minus the initial position, evaluate all this at t, vi t plus 1 half a t squared minus, evaluate it all at 0, 0. Okay. And then there you have it. So this is the final equation. We could move the xi over here to get sort of the most normal form. The final position is the initial position plus vit plus 1 half a t squared. Possibly the most famous equation in all of simple 1D kinematics. Um, but it only applies if you have constant acceleration. And to use it, you need to know if maybe you have some constant position or initial position and some initial velocity. So next I'm going to show you another way to get this, and then we'll look at how you can use it a little bit.